In this video, I'm going to talk about marginal cost of capital. Please remember, in decision making, it is the marginal cost of capital which we need to know about rather than the weighted average cost of capital. The weighted average cost of capital only tells us about the cost of our existing sources of finance. Whereas the marginal cost of capital tells us about the cost of future sources of finance which we will be needing to finance our future projects. Hi, I am the Commerce Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you will find videos covering learning outcomes of various professional qualifications and certifications including life-changing business ideas and hacks. A humble and gentle request to you, if you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe my channel and press the bell notification button so that you keep getting my videos on the timely basis. Thank you. I highly recommend that you watch my video on weighted average cost of capital which explains you how weighted average cost of capital is calculated, what is cost of capital, so on and so forth. Now, marginal cost of capital is one step ahead. So as I told you, in decision making, we need the marginal cost of capital rather than weighted average cost of capital. As you know, marginal means cost of something extra. So let's assume a company has a particular capital structure which comprises of bonds, preference equity and common stock. So based on that, yes, we can calculate weighted average cost of capital, which I told you I already have made a video on. Now, what is marginal cost of capital? What if a company needs additional funds to finance its future projects? Obviously, if we want additional funds, there will be some additional cost. This is what we call marginal cost of capital. One thing everybody needs to understand that most of the times, companies will prefer to use retain earning to fund its uh, future projects. And obviously retain earning does have some cost, but the cost of using retain earning is way lower than the cost of additional funds. Why? Whenever you go for additional funds, there are associated flotation cost, uh, brokerage fees, uh, underwriting commissions, so on and so forth. So our basic understanding is, as long as we have some retained earning balance, our cost of funds will be way lower using retained earnings rather than going for issuing additional preference or common stock. So to understand the concept of marginal cost of capital, we need to understand what is meant by break-even point. To understand break-even point, please assume that the company already has some balance in the retained earnings and the company needs to fund its new projects. So what a company will normally do, they will use its existing retained earning to fund the new projects. As long as the retained earnings are used and until the existing retained earning balance is depleted, the company will have a marginal cost of capital, which will be a lower marginal cost of capital. As soon as the available balance in the retained earning is depleted and the company's goes for issuing additional shares whether preferred or common the marginal cost of capital will be higher which means the company will have two marginal cost of capital one which is a lower one as long as retained earning balance is utilized second one would be once retained earning balance is utilized and the company goes for selling new shares whether it be preferred or common so as I told you that there will be two marginal cost of capital, one while the company is using retained earnings, one when the retained earning balance is exhausted. So the point at which marginal cost of capital changes from a lower to a higher is known as the break-even point. The marginal cost of capital will be way higher the moment the company raises new funds which goes above the break-even point. So if I explain you what is meant by limit, so limit is the point above which the cost of any specific financing will increase. And the proportion of total capital is the proportion of that specific capital to total capital. It will be explained much more in detail when I do this question. So let's assume the type of financing because which the marginal cost of capital changes means increases is common equity. So in that case, this formula is like, we look at the available retail earning balance, let's say 5, 10, 15, 20 millions, divide by percentage of common equity to total capital. For example, if you look at this, uh, common shares, common equity is 250 million, and the total capital is 500 million. So percentage of common equity to total capital is 50%, because 250 divided by 500 is 50%. 
So what we do is assuming available retained earning is 25 million. So I write in the numerator 25 million and then divide by percentage of common equity to total capital which is 50% by 50%. Whatever I get that is the equity break even point which means let's say the amount comes to 50 million. That means if we need finance above 50 million our marginal cost of capital will change. So let's jump into the practical application of marginal cost of capital. Let's see how marginal cost of capital is calculated. So here we have a question. It says capital structure of Boom Boom Limited is given below. Debt is 200 million. Preference equity or preference shares is 50 million. Common equity or common shares is 250 million. So when I add all of them, I'm getting 500 million. Once I have these details, I can look at the weight. Weight means debt is what percentage of total capital. So 200 million is what percentage of 500 million? That's 40%. 50 million is what percentage of 500 million 10% and 250 as a total percentage is 50%. So that is known as the weight. Weight means the composition of each source of finance in the total capital. So the total capital the company is financed by 500 million. Debt is what percentage of 500 million 40. Preference shares 10. Common equity 50%. And for your ease, the cost of capital is already given. For debt, it is 6%. For equity, it is 8.4%. And common share is 12%. So just to give you a quick recap, if you want to find weighted average cost of capital, what you need to do is you just multiply the weight by the cost of capital. Please remember, these values should be at market value. Whenever you are calculating weighted average cost of capital, the value of debt, preference shares and equity, common equity should be at market value. So it is assumed that these are all market value. So weight multiply by their respective cost. When you multiply and add all of them up, you get weighted average cost of capital, which is 9.24%. Now, what is the scenario? The scenario is company needs additional 100 million for new projects. So obviously there are some new projects coming up, company needs uh, money, company needs cash to finance those projects and how much do they need? 100 million. At the moment, 10 million is available in retain earnings, RE is retain earnings. Which means if the company needs 100 million to fund its new projects, 10 million is available in retain earnings. So additional funds to be raised either through debt, preference shares or common shares is 90 million. Further assumption is that even if the company raises new capital of 90 million, the capital structure should remain the same because this is considered optimum for this question. Now, as we discussed earlier, the moment we go for additional funds, the cost is different than before. So here it is assumed that bond can be raised at the same cost, which is 6%. If you want to raise new funds through bond, the cost will be 6%, which is the interest which we have to pay on bonds. Additional preference equity will cost 9%, not 8.4. An additional common equity, also known as common stock or ordinary shares, will cost us 13%, not 12%. So now we need to understand, first of all, what is the limit? which means beyond which the marginal cost of capital will change. And the second step will be which source of finance we are going to use, whether it be preference shares or common shares, whatever. So now first step, we need to look at the equity break even point. So in this formula, if I plug in the numbers, available retained earning as per this question is 10 million, which is 10 million. And the percentage of equity capital to total capital. Now, common shares are 250 million and total capital is 500. So 250 is what percentage of 500? 50%. So I divide it by 0.5. So this will give me 20 million. My equity break-even point. Now, what is meant by equity break-even point of 20 million that means when the company goes for additional source of finance we need 100 million 10 million is available in retained earning okay 90 million is to be raised so for the first 20 million the marginal cost of capital will be different which will be a bit lower and for the remaining additional funds the marginal cost of capital will be higher so please understand we need to raise total 100 million but 
10 million is already available in retail earnings so we need 90 million so when we're looking at this if you look at the cost bond is the same cost now when we focus on the equity that is preference and ordinary shares which has a lower cost obviously preference shares so what we are looking at is when we're talking about first 20 million it is understood that 10 million is used from the available retained earnings and another 10 million is coming from preferred stock which is preferred equity so again i'm reminding if 90 million is to be raised 10 million is already in retained earning so 10 million will come from preference shares because the cost is uh, you know uh, nine percent and then the remaining will come from equity which is a little higher 13 but we don't have a choice so uh, let's see what is the marginal cost of capital for the first 20 million so as mentioned the capital structure should remain the same that means the weightage should remain the same but the cost may change so for the first 20 million $20 million. the marginal cost of capital is calculated obviously we have weight and we have cost here and then we can have marginal cost of capital here so weight is same 40 10 and 50 40 percent 10 percent and 50 percent okay cost debt as it says debt will cost us the same so I'm taking as six percent Preference share capital not 8.4 but it would be 9% okay so out of this 20 million 10 million is coming from retained earning 10 million is coming from preference share capital which will be 9% okay equity we are not touching so equity remains the same as 12% so when I multiply 40 by 6% 0 0.0240 when I multiply 10 by 9% I will get 0 0.0090 when I multiply 50 by 12 percent 0.5 into 0.12 this will give me 0 0.0600 so when I add all this that will give me 0 0.0930 okay when I multiply by 100 so I will get 9.3 percent now this 9.3% is my marginal cost of capital for the first 20 million. Now this 20 million I am reminding you again it includes 10 million from retail earning and 10 million from preferred stock. And please remember why the cost of common stock is taken the same here because up till now new common stock common equity is not been issued why because 20 million is covered from 10 million available balance in retail earning and 10 million from preference shares that's why additional preference shares will cost nine percent i've not taken 8.4 i've taken nine percent now let's see what will be the cost for the remaining 80 million why i'm saying 80 million 100 million was to be raised 10 million we already have from retail earning 10 million we got here in this 20 10 million is from preferred shares so please remember 100 million was to be raised 10 million was in retail earning so actually we had to raise 90 million from 90 million what happens this 20 shows 10 million from retail earning 10 million from the preferred shares so out of 90 10 million is already raised in this from preferred shares so out of 90 if I minus 10 million from preference shares another 80 million so uh, I'm looking at cost of additional 80 million dollars so as we said debt is the same debt the weightage is uh, 40 percent uh, preferred equity weightage the weightage for preferred equity is 10 percent and common equity or common shares the weightage is 50 percent as we said the capital structure we are not changing we are considering it optimal now what is important is the cost the question says the cost of debt is not changing so i'm taking the same six percent preferred equity was nine percent but now that this 80 million is coming from ordinary equity that is common shares 
the additional cost of issuing new shares is 13%. So I am taking it as 13%. Again, when I multiply 40 by 6%, 10 by 9, 50 by this, okay, and all these amounts, when I add, I will get the marginal cost of capital for additional 80 million shares, which comes to 9.8%. The next calculation we need to do is we need to look at how much in terms of dollar is the total amount of funds to be raised from each source which is debt, preference shares and ordinary shares. So in that case what we need to understand is uh, we have three sources which is debt, we have preferred shares, we have common shares okay and total funds which we require is 90 million and if as already discussed the weight should be the same as per 40 10 and 50 so this should be 40 percent this should be 10 percent and this should be 50 percent okay so that means in 90 million additional funds obviously i'm again repeating 100 million was required 10 million we already had in retain earnings so 90 million is the additional fund required so 40 percent of that should be debt so 40 percent of this would be 36 million 10 percent of 90 million will be 9 million and 50 percent of this will be 45 million now the next step we have to look at is once these additional funds have been raised what will be the total capital after raising 90 million additional funds and we're looking at the respective uh, amounts of each of the sources of finance so if you look at the original question debt was 200 million and 36 million we are raising now so this is new funds right so originally we had 200 million 36 million is raised now so uh, total now for debt will be 236 million likewise 50 million we already had in preference shares and 9 million we are issuing now so it would be 59 million preferred shares or preferred equity 59 million and common stock or common equity 250 million we already had and 45 million now we have so common shares or common equity will be 295 million so if we add all of them 500 million was there 990 million is there so total will be 590 million total equity so if you notice it was 500 million we wanted 100 million more so it should be 6 million here it's not 6 million because 10 million we already had in retail earning so the total capital increases only by 90 million not by 100 million because 10 million we already had in retail earnings now we have to look at the new weighted average cost of capital for the company once all the new finance have been raised with respect to debt preference equity and ordinary equity so let's calculate the new weighted average cost of capital so the new weighted average cost of capital earlier when I, why I am saying new earlier it was 9.24 so what's the new we have debt we have preference shares we have common shares the weight remains the same because assumption is that uh, the company does not want to disturb its capital structure which is 40 10 and 50 so this is 40 percent this is 10 percent and this is 50 percent now the cost here debt was the same as the question says it's not changing it's 0 0.06 that means 6 percent for preference shares i am putting an asterisk here and for this I'm putting two asterisks here I'll tell you the amount which I'm going to put here how we calculated them so this will be 0 0.085 and this is 0 0.122 so let's look at how we got 0 0.085 so if you look at total equity after the additional source is 590 million and before it was just 500 million 
So if we look at preference shares, because we're talking about how we got this amount, if we look at old capital was 500 million and after new additional sources, it's 590 million. So if you look at preference shares, 50 million, and now it has become 59 million. So in this 59 million, we have 50 million, which cost us 8.4. So I'm writing it here. In this 59 million, 50 million cost us 8.4. So 50 million out of 59 million cost us 8.4%. And in this 59 million, 9 million, which we raised additional through preference shares, cost us 9%. So 9 million out of 59 million cost us 9%. So when you solve this and you solve this and you add both of them, you will get this amount. This amount. Likewise, if you look at common shares, common equity, earlier it was 250 million. Now it has become 295. In this 295, we have 250 million, which costs us 12%. So we have 250 million out of 295 million which cost us 12% and 45 million in this 295 million cost us 13%. So 45 million out of 295 cost us 13%. So when you solve this and you solve this and you add them, you will get this. In the end, just add all these three, you will get your marginal cost of capital, MCC. So when you add all of them and multiply by 100, you come to 9.35%. So if I give you a quick recap, originally the company has a weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital means the cost of existing source of finance, which you have already acquired. Okay, these are your sources of finance. This is the structure, uh, 200 million of debt, 50 million of preference shares, 250 million of ordinary shares, total capital of 500 million. Then when you went on raising additional finance, you had to raise 100 million, but luckily you had 10 millions in retain earning. So 90 million was to be raised additionally. So what happened here is, once we look at the first 20 million as per equity break even. So we got available return earning divided by percentage of common equity, which is the highest here, 50%. Okay, so that is 20 million. So 10 million was available. Okay, 90 million more. So when we talk about out of 100, so the first 20 million, where this 20 million is coming from? 10 million from return earning and another 10 million from preference shares. Why preference shares first? Because the cost is lower if you compare it with uh, ordinary shares. So for the first 20 million, the marginal cost of capital was 9.3. So if you notice from 9.24, it is going to 9.3. Why? Because we have utilized uh, preference shares, 10 million from preference shares, which costs us 9% rather than 8.4. So obviously, once your retained earning has been utilized, has been consumed, the available balance has been used, and you go for additional source of finance, your cost of capital will go up. So earlier it was 9.24, now it has become 9.3. Why? Because in this 20 million, 10 million is coming from preference shares. Further, we are talking about additional 80 million. Why 80? Out of 100, 10 million was already there in uh, in retail earnings okay 10 million we took from preference shares so 80 million is left now in this 80 million what is happening we are using common equity okay so preferred equity is already used so that's why we are taking 99 percent common equity will be addition the additional cost of common equity will be 13 percent so once we do that and we multiply these and add all of them, our marginal cost of capital is coming 9.8. That means from preferred shares, if we go on issuing additional common shares, we did raise, we did issue preference shares. So from 9.24, it became 9.3. Now, what is the marginal cost of issuing ordinary shares, common equity? 
it became 9.8 so from 9.3 it jumped to 9.8 okay this is how marginal cost of capital is calculated to remind you marginal cost of capital shows the cost of acquiring additional funds okay once all the funds have been received has been raised now what is your new weighted average cost of capital is 9.35 so guys i hope you have understood the concept of marginal cost of capital uh, i highly recommend again watch my video on weighted average cost of capital which will help you understand that how we got originally these amounts 6 8.4 and 12 percent which is very important if you have any queries relating to this video please leave a comment i will reply to you as always so if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe press the bell notification button if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time love you all